Good morning, I'm Nathan Hager. And I'm Karen Moscow. Here are the stories we're following today. We begin with the latest developments involving Boeing after disaster was narrowly averted on an Alaska Airlines flight on Friday. Boeing stock right now is down more than 8%, and we get more from Bloomberg's John Tucker. John. And Nathan, airlines around the globe have been grounding Boeing 737 MAX 9 after a fuselage section on a brand new Alaska Airlines jet blew out during a flight on Friday. This is a door panel that can be sealed or used for access depending on the configuration. Only luck prevented a more disastrous outcome. The National Transportation Safety Board Chair Jennifer Homendi says Alaska Airlines pilots did report pressurization warning lights on three earlier flights of the two-month-old plane in question. The auto pressurization fail light that did illuminate in three previous flights, one on December 7th, one on January 3rd, and one on January 4th. A school teacher in Portland found the missing fuselage door plug in his backyard. The door plug that blew out was next to seats 26A and 26B, and just by chance, there was nobody sitting there. The plane did carry 171 passengers. Now, valuable data usually collected by the so-called black box, that was erased. Boeing's supplier, Spirit Aerosystems Holdings, was the company that installed the panel on the nearly new jet. John Tucker, Bloomberg Radio. All right, John, thank you. Well, we now want to turn to the latest developments in the Middle East. Secretary of State Antony Blinken is in the region for a fourth time since the Israeli-Hamas war broke out. Blinken is warning the war could, quote, easily become a wider conflict. He spoke during a news conference in Doha. This is a conflict that could easily metastasize, causing even more insecurity and even more suffering. And Secretary of State Blinken met with Jordan's King Abdullah on Sunday, a day after stops in Turkey and Greece. Well, back here in the U.S., Karen, the risk of a government shutdown on January 20th has eased somewhat with word of a deal on spending caps. Bloomberg's Amy Morris has details from Washington. Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer and House Speaker Mike Johnson negotiated the bipartisan deal, which caps spending at $1.59 trillion. Republicans have agreed to a set of budget moves to spare immediate cuts to domestic agency budgets. The deal does not include an agreement to block all conservative policy writers, so there still may be debates over defunding investigations into former President Trump. And while that might cause an impasse later, for now, lawmakers have the framework they need to avoid a government shutdown this month. The next deadline is February 2nd. In Washington, Amy Morris, Bloomberg Radio. All right, Amy, thank you. Now the latest on the health of Lloyd Austin. Bloomberg News has learned the Pentagon's failure to notify President Biden that his defense secretary had been hospitalized for four days was the result of a series of errors. They include confusion over Austin's wishes and his chief of staff falling ill. Former Republican Congresswoman Liz Cheney is looking for answers. I think they've got some very serious explaining to do. I think that there's a there's a real difference between public transparency and, you know, alerting the commander in chief to the fact that the Secretary of Defense is in the hospital. Mm-hmm. Apparently, the Deputy Secretary was on vacation in Puerto Rico. Um, I think it's inexplicable. Uh, mm-hmm. We need to know more about exactly what happened there, but that's not the way the Pentagon ought to be conducting business. And that's former Congresswoman Liz Cheney. On Saturday, Secretary Austin apologized for failing to inform the public for days while saying he's on the mend and expects to return to the Pentagon soon. Let's turn to Wall Street now, Karen. Bank earnings and a possible Bitcoin ETF will be front and center this week. More from Bloomberg's Charlie Pellet. Friday, we hear from J.P. Morgan Chase, Citigroup, Bank of America, and Wells Fargo. Quarterly earnings reports come amid questions about the path of inflation and Fed interest rate policy. Cameron Dawson is Chief Investment Officer at New Edge Wealth. The thing that's the biggest challenge for us for earnings estimates in 24 is the expectation that top-line growth will re-accelerate in a year where nominal growth, because of inflation, is expected to decelerate. Also this week, the Securities and Exchange Commission will decide whether to approve an exchange-traded fund tied directly to the world's largest cryptocurrency. In New York, Charlie Pellet, Bloomberg Radio. All right, Charlie, thanks. In company news, Bloomberg News has learned Merck is in advanced talks to acquire cancer drug maker Harpoon Therapeutics. The price tag, about $700 million. San Francisco-based Harpoon is developing drugs that harness the body's immune system to fight cancer. Shares of Harpoon are up about 100 percent. 
We're also while following Apple, uh, Karen, which has fallen almost 6% to kick off the new year. Jeffries says Apple's iPhone sales slump in China is deepening, and the company is likely to see volumes decline further this year. Apple saw a double-digit fall in volumes in December. Jeffries forecasts a similar decline for 2024. Checking shares of Apple right now, they are little change to the downside. And on the economic front, Nathan, inflation will be the focus for investors. Bloomberg's Vinnie Dal Judice has more. The Labor Department issues the Consumer Price Index Thursday and the Producer Price Index Friday. Both covered December. Rising gasoline prices could have an impact on the household data, says Bloomberg Economics. Looking further out, Bloomberg Economics sees U.S. inflation continuing to run above the Federal Reserve's 2% target this year, even with all the rate hikes. Vinnie Dal Judice, Bloomberg Radio. Nathan, thank you. It's time for a look at some of the other stories making news around the world. And for that, we're joined by Bloomberg's Amy Morris. Amy, good morning. Good morning, Karen. Ukraine suffered a second large-scale Russian missile barrage this year as temperatures dropped below freezing in the latest escalation of aerial attacks. Now, this barrage killed one woman and left at least 30 more people wounded. After months of relatively few airstrikes, Russia is ramping up bombardment just before the new year, firing hundreds of missiles at cities across Ukraine, including the capital. Meanwhile, Ukraine has been targeting bases in occupied Crimea, with the Air Force saying over the weekend that it destroyed a Russian command post there. Meanwhile, President Joe Biden is set to visit Charleston, South Carolina today, including a stop at Mother Emanuel AME Church, where back in 2015, nine churchgoers were shot and killed by a self-proclaimed white supremacist. Charlotte City Councilman Malcolm Graham is the brother of one of those victims, Cynthia Graham Heard, and tells ABC News that when the president visits local black history points of interest, he's sending a strong message. Uh, visiting sites like the, uh, the new historic African-American museum, he, he uh, makes uh, a point that history matters, that black history matters, it just not just occurs uh, in the month of February, uh, that black history is also American history. Biden, meanwhile, working to shore up support among black voters in Nikki Haley's home state as the Republican governor, of, former governor of South Carolina, is rising in the polls. Texas Republican Congressman Tony Gonzalez reflected on the third anniversary of the January 6th attack on the Capitol and stands by his labeling of the mob as domestic terrorists, refusing to accept former President Trump's statements made on the rioters, describing them as heroes and hostages. They're certainly not heroes. You know, I, I, they, 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 dis, they, they broke the law, and, and we have to obey our laws. We are a nation of laws, and they have to obey the laws. Representative Gonzalez tells ABC's This Week he does not support Donald Trump's proposed plan to pardon those convicted for their actions that day. Hospitals across the country are telling people mask up. Flu and COVID-19 cases are once again on the rise. The viruses have actually been in, on the incline for the past few weeks. Health officials are predicting infections will increase even more throughout this month. Global News, 24 hours a day and whenever you want it with Bloomberg News Now. I'm Amy Morris, and this is Bloomberg. Karen. All right, Amy, thank you. We do bring you news throughout the day here on Bloomberg Radio. But now you can get the latest news on demand, and that means whenever you want it. Subscribe to Bloomberg News Now to get the latest headlines at the click of a button. Get informed on your schedule. You can listen and subscribe to Bloomberg News Now on the Bloomberg Business app, Bloomberg.com, plus Apple, Spotify, and anywhere else you get your podcasts. Time now for the Bloomberg Sports Update. Here's John Stash Hour. John. Karen, the NFL regular season is over. The playoffs begin on Saturday with a late afternoon game between the Cleveland Browns and the Houston Texans, a team that won only 11 games over the previous three seasons, won 10 this year. The Texans won the AFC South when Jacksonville lost its game yesterday at Tennessee, 28-20. Saturday night, it'll be Miami at Kansas City. The Dolphins blew a lead in the AFC East, and last night's loss to Buffalo, 21-14, cost the Dolphins the AFC East. They're a wild card, and they'll take on the Chiefs. Sunday at 1 Eastern, Pittsburgh in Buffalo. Then it's Green Bay at Dallas. The Packers gaining a wild card spot with a 17-9 win over Chicago. The Cowboys won the NFC East. They blew out Washington yesterday, 38-10. Sunday night, it'll be the Rams 
in Detroit. So Matthew Stafford will face his former team in the wild card weekend. Will conclude next Monday night slumping Philadelphia at Tampa Bay. Eagles have been a train wreck down the stretch of the season, losing five of the last six. They were beaten by the Giants yesterday, 27 to 10. The Bucks won the NFC South with a nine nothing win over Carolina. Atlanta Falcons have fired coach Arthur Smith. Will the Patriots part ways with Bill Belichick after 25 years as coach there? We should find out soon. Michigan and Washington play tonight in Houston for the national championship. Both teams 14-0, although the Huskies haven't won a game by more than 10 points since September. The Wolverines are the favorites. From coast to coast, from New York to San Francisco, Boston to Washington, D.C., nationwide on Sirius XM, the Bloomberg Business App, and Bloomberg.com. This is Bloomberg Daybreak. Good morning. I'm Nathan Hager. Airlines around the world are starting to ground their Boeing 737 MAX 9 jets after part of the fuselage blew out on a brand new model operated by Alaska Airlines last Friday. It is another blow to Boeing's turnaround efforts after two deadly 737 MAX crashes nearly five years ago. For more, we are joined by Bloomberg News Aviation Czar Anthony Palazzo. Anthony, what more do we know about why this mishap happened and where the investigation stands. Hi, Nathan. Thanks for having me. Um, yeah, so we had two developments uh, late late yesterday. Uh, one is that uh, the, the investigators have found the door panel that fell out of the plane. Uh, this is a key piece of evidence, um, uh, and, and they're going to be looking very closely at the condition of that panel to understand why it popped out of the fuselage section. Um, the panel was found in the backyard of a, a Portland area school teacher. So what could that panel tell us about how this happened? Well, well, what they've what they've said so far is that they've looked at um, they've looked at the tabs that hold that panel in from the interior of the plane, which was largely undamaged. Um, and and that they didn't find a whole lot. Uh, they didn't find you know a problem there. Uh, so they're gonna so they're gonna need to keep going to understand exactly how this came off. Those those panels are screwed in with four bolts. Um, they're not in use, although they can be opened from the outside of of the plane. Uh, those are essentially openings that are built uh, for an emergency door. But a lot of the a lot of the airlines that um, that use this aircraft, it's a stretched Boeing 737 MAX jet. Uh, a lot of the airlines don't use those exit doors because they're not needed for the seat configurations that they use. So this is putting more scrutiny on the manufacturing process at Boeing, particularly around the 737 MAX. Is there something particular about the MAX 9 that could have caused a problem like this, as opposed to the uh, 737 MAXs that were involved in those crashes that we all remember just a few years ago? Yes, well, the, well, the, the MAX 9 is a stretch version of the, of the core uh, uh, Boeing MAX plane, which is called the MAX 8. So it's a it's a bit longer um, and it can seat more people, but because it can seat more people uh, uh, in its in its most uh, densely packed configurations, it requires more uh, ad additional uh, safety exits. So a lot of a lot of the low cost carriers that would use that plane would would want to put in more seats and therefore more uh, more emergency exits. Uh, uh, most carriers, so now, so now the the Max Eight does not have that that kind of a um, uh, kind of configuration. Doesn't have those exits and doesn't need them. Uh, the way that Boeing has done it is that they they put in the essentially modular cutouts into the frame, so so they can make all the fuselages the same, and then when they finish the aircraft, they can decide you know, with the customer, whether or not to install those doors or or to install plugs in, in those holes. And so now, that's the difference. Yeah. Right. And now we have a couple of hundred of these uh, 737 MAX 9s getting taken out of service. These low cost carriers, including Alaska and United, grounding these jets. How big a blow potentially could this be for Boeing when it's been trying to put a turnaround plan into place? 
Well, it's a real setback. Uh, uh, you know, the the extent to how how deep or how long term mm. it it ends up being that's all yet to be de determined. But certainly, investors uh, are selling down the stock this morning. Uh, we saw that shares go down about eight point three percent in pre market trading. Their supplier is Spirit Aerosystems. That is a former Boeing unit that makes the fuselage, and they they're down about sixteen percent. Um, I I I think there's been there's been a lot of there's been a lot of speculation about the relationship between Boeing and Spirit, and 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 how wise it was to separate the two companies. Uh, uh, you know, Spirit's been responsible for a couple of the real uh, supplier glitches that that have held back production at Boeing, and uh, and they've been weakened financially. Boeing had to um, uh, redo some some contracts with Spirit. They had to mm -hmm. infuse some money into it. Yeah. Uh, so so this may be something uh, that that Boeing reconsiders in the longer term. This is Bloomberg Daybreak Today, your morning brief on the stories making news from Wall Street to Washington and beyond. Look for us on your podcast feed at 6 a.m. Eastern each morning on Apple, Spotify, and anywhere else you get your podcasts. You can also listen live each morning starting at 5 a.m. Wall Street time on Bloomberg 1130 in New York, Bloomberg 991 in Washington, Bloomberg 1061 in Boston, and Bloomberg 960 in San Francisco. Our flagship New York station is also available on your Amazon Alexa devices. Just say Alexa, play Bloomberg 1130. Plus, listen coast to coast on the Bloomberg Business app, Sirius XM, the iHeartRadio app, and on Bloomberg.com. I'm Nathan Hager. And I'm Karen Moscow. Join us again tomorrow morning for all the news you need to start your day right here on Bloomberg Daybreak.